Okay, last time I showed you guys the binomial theorem, namely a plus b to the nth power is equal to this, and here is your binomial coefficient formula. And I gave you guys an explanation why we have to multiply this with and choose k with a combinatorial argument. So if you haven't seen that video, you should just go watch that. Unfortunately though, this right here is only true when n is equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. And some people may be arguing, should I really put down a 0 right here? Kind of, because if n is equal to 0, then it's redundant, it's just 1 is equal to 1, so yeah. But anyway, that's not a big deal right here. Today we'll see what if the power here is just like a negative number or fraction, and it's in general, or maybe the pi's power. I know some of you guys love pi so much, so maybe the pi's power right here. In this case, what can we do? Well, some people may say, hey, this right here is just like our best friend, right? We can just use the best friend to do this. Yes, but today we are not doing calculus, we are doing algebra. And I'll show you guys the generalized version of the binomial theorem. Um, there is still some kind of calculus being involved because I have to draw that infinity symbol. Perhaps that's the only place for the calculus part, but anyway, here we go. This is the generalized binomial theorem, okay? Generalized binomial theorem. And of course, I didn't come with this, Newton did, and I'm just showing you guys what he did and all that stuff, right? Binomial theorem. Okay, so the theorem statement is actually really similar, except for instead of n, you can have any real number that you want. So let me just put down a plus b again, but this time I'm going to write down r because we want to talk about any real number, including negative, including fractions, including irrational numbers and all that. This right here is equal to, we still have to have the sum, so let's go ahead and put that down, and I still have to have the k, and starting at 0, so let's also put that down. Yes, we still have to have this coefficient, which is, this time, it will be r, choose k, okay, and, of course, I'll close this blue parentheses right here. r choose k, r is any real number. And this portion stays the same, except for you have to change the n to r. So we get a to the r minus k's power right here. And we multiply by b to the k's power. And here, let me just tell you guys that if you want any r that you want, meaning r as a real number, then in this case, you have to go from k equal to 0 to infinity. Wow, infinitely many terms, and perhaps this is the only place that kind of requires the calculus part, if you want to do this rigorous in terms of taking the limits and all that, but don't worry too much. I'm not going to tell you guys how, like, when this is going to converge, because I want to keep this like an algebra video, but I will just tell you guys a little bit, okay? Anyway, here we go. In order for us to make sense of this, I will have to explain this notation when r is just any real number, like how exactly can we, can we handle that, right? So here we go. Let me just write this down for you guys as an example. So let's talk about how are we compute this. When we have r as, let's say, negative 2. And the deal is that when you put down k equal to 0 to infinity, k has to be just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, okay? So do not say, what happens if k is equal to 1 half? In that case, I don't know. You have to tell me. Maybe you can put it right here and then use the gamma function whatsoever, but no, let's stay away from that. Anyway, negative 2, let's say choose 5, like this. Whoa! I know this is crazy because usually we just deal with the past the whole numbers, well, maybe at most 0 right here, right? But this is how we are going to compute this when r is just any real number. What we do is start from this number, which is negative 2, and we are going to go down four more times. Because remember, just like last time, we have to have five numbers starting at this number here, and then your minus one, minus one, all that, right? So begin at negative two. The next one will be not negative one, it's negative three. This is one less than that. And then I need another one. I need another one. And I need one more. Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 numbers, okay? And we will have to divide it by 5 factorial. Start with 5 and you keep going down until 1 and you just multiply them. This is just nicely equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 
very very nice okay and of course we can just work this out now let's see this and that will be cancelled and likewise this and that and this and that ah, let's just cancel like that and of course on the top we have five negative signs and you multiply them out you get negative six okay that's pretty cool huh huh this right here is a generalized binomial coefficient when you say generalized you can do this kind of things well let's see how we can write down a formula for this expression though unfortunately we cannot use the factorial notation anymore because the factorial notation it's only good for non-negative well actually past the whole numbers only right zero factorial okay it's just by definition one but you can also talk about the gamma function, but again, let's stay away from it. This is how we're gonna do it. So here's the deal. R choose K when R is any real number. This is how we do it. This is also good if you have like say more legitimate numbers, but you know, this is better. And when you have this, usually people just tell you that. Anyway, starting at R and you have to go down by one. So R minus one and you have to go down, go down by one. Well, how many times? You have to go down so many times so that you have k numbers on the top. You have to have k numbers on the top. Well, this is the first number. You have to go down k minus one time. See, earlier I started with negative two, and I have to go down four more times so I can have five numbers altogether. So here I will have to go down and then up to r minus k minus one, this is k minus one, like this. So altogether, you have five numbers. No, I mean you have k numbers on the top and they have to be going down. And the truth is that if you start with, let's say one half, the next, the next number will be one half minus one, which is negative one half, and then negative three half, and then you have to think, you have to think more and all that stuff, but just do the count of fractions on your own. Anyway, on the bottom here, this is nice because it's just k, factorial this is still legit to write it down as k factorial the truth is this right here it's another kind of factorial this is called the folding factorial because you are going to start with this and you go down right so the notation for that is you can put down parentheses with r inside and then put down the subscript k right here okay and then divide it by k factorial again this notation means you start with r you go get down k minus one more time and you have all that and usually people will distribute this a little bit namely r minus k plus one but i think this is pretty clear already so that's pretty much how you compute that again this also works if you have positive whole numbers just like the google ones right and let's do something cool Let's see, I don't want to do the like a plus b to the negative 2 power. Let's talk about our best friend first as an example, okay? So, before I do that, recall our best friend right here. Ha, huh. let's see. Well, well, we know our best friend is, of course, I'm not sure, 1 over 1 minus x. And the reason I call this being our best friend, because when you are dealing with a power series whatsoever, power series example power series especially i mean this right here shows up so often and then this is the best way that's going to save your life toward the end of your calculus 2 class seriously because the last portion is the power series business and if you keep your best friend in mind you can pass your calculus 2 class then that's why this is our best friend Anyway, 1 over 1 minus x, of course, we can write this as 1 minus x raised to the negative 1 power. And of course, this right here will be the a, and this right here will be the b, right? And the n is just negative 1. So here we go. Let's focus on negative 1. And I will just write that down right here for you guys. This right here is equal to the sum as k going from 0 to infinity. And we have to have the r choose k, which is negative 1 choose k. And that will give us negative 1 choose k in our situation. And then we have to write down the rest. In our case here, the a is 1, so that's nice, because we just have 1 raised to the r minus k's power, which is just always going to be 1 right here. Very, very nice. And then the other part is going to be, well, for this b, 
you are going to take the negative x. Okay, you have to take the negative one with the x right here. So you are going to put a parentheses, negative x right here, and raise that to the case power, like that. And this is pretty much a setup, but we can do better because our best friend looks really well. You can check out my back. That. Yeah. All right. You guys can check out the link in the description if you are interested to purchase one of these shirts, right? But don't wear this to your class. I mean, on the test days. You can wear this to show off to your calculus teachers, but you know, just don't wear this uh, when you have to take the test. Yeah, seriously. It doesn't benefit you anyway. People behind you, they'll thank you, but yeah. Anyway, here is the deal. We're gonna simplify this a little bit, and this is how we will do it. Let me just make some observation right here for you guys, right? So let's take a look. What if we have negative one, choose k, right? We have to see what this is. And of course, let's see, when we have negative one, choose zero, this right here is just boring, just one. Negative one, choose one. This right here, you go from negative one, one time, you don't do anything else, and divide it by one factorial, this is negative one. If you are negative one, choose two. This right here, you are going to go from negative 1 and down again, which is negative 2, over 2 factorial, meaning 2 times 1. And check this out. On the top, you pretty much have 2 factorial if you ignore all the negative signs. On the bottom, you also have 2 factorial. So they cancel, but negative times negative gives you positive 1. And right here, we can do negative 1 to the, I mean, negative 1, choose 3. And in this case, you do negative 1 times negative 2 times negative 3 over 3 times 2 times 1. Work this out, you get negative 1. And I think you can see the pattern already. It depends on the case value. And this is the same as saying negative 1 to the case power. In this case, our k is 0, so I can put that down 0. And likewise, this right here is negative 1 to the first power. This right here is negative 1 to the second power and all that. So this is very, very nice because we can replace this right here with negative one to the case power. Unfortunately, if you have negative two or negative one half or positive three over two, you may have to work out more things on your own, but I'll leave that to you guys. Anyway, this right here is negative one to the case power. And the truth is when you have this right here, this is like saying negative one to the case power as well, isn't it? Because this is negative one times x, and then you raise negative one to the case power, and the other part is x to the case power, like that. So all in all, you will see this right here is actually equal to the sum. When k goes from zero to infinity, let me just write down everything in black now, negative 1 to the case power times negative 1 to the case power, the truth is you get negative 1 to the 2 case power, you add the exponents, and because the power is always even now, negative 2, 1 to the even power is always 1. So this is 1. This is 1. 1 times 1 is still 1. So you have just 1. Everybody, in terms of the coefficients, right, all the coefficients is just 1. And you multiply by x to the case power. And if you guys take a look off the back, this is, of course, our best friend. 1 over 1 minus x is equal to this. Unfortunately, this is only true if the absolute value of x is less than 1, okay? Only if the absolute value of x is less than 1, right? So keep this in mind. So that's pretty much it. And now if you want to figure that out, Okay, we can write down an expression by just following this form. So I'll put that down right here for you guys. The sum as k goes from 0 to infinity. So let me... The sum as k going from 0 to infinity. So this is the difference. It's infinite, right? This is what we call the infinite series. And you have to have the you know, generalized binomial coefficient, which is negative 2 choose k, like this. And you just multiply all the rest, which is a to the r minus k 
case power, R should be in, st still in blue, so I should put on negative 2, minus k, and we multiply by b to the k's power, like that. So this is how you can expand this right here. But the issue is that, just like our best friend, this only makes sense if the absolute value of x is less than 1. So maybe you guys can leave a comment down below and let us know. Based on this right here, what's the condition right here to make this legitimate? Of course, you can take a look right here. You can just do some algebra. You don't really have to do anything from your you know, calculus class. So just do some algebra and then give us a uh, condition. Under what condition will this be true and useful and convergent and all that stuff, right? And let me also ask you guys, what does the negative 6 represent in here then, right? Again, what does the negative 6 represent in this right here? In fact, I will answer that question myself because I think that will be a pretty fun question to talk about. So here's the deal. As we can see right here, k is 5. And of course, we're talking about the binomial coefficients, but this is the generalized version. And in fact, you don't get a polynomial because you end up with some negative exponents. You start with a negative power in the first place, so we cannot complain. Anyway, here is the deal. This right here represents the coefficient. Let me just put it down like this, coefficient of, well, a and b, hmm, k is 5. So we must have b to the fifth power. And let me write it down right here for you guys. And as you all know, we have negative 2 for the r. We have to have negative 2 minus 5, because k is 5, and you work that out. Negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. So this right here represents the coefficient of a to the negative 7 times b to the fifth power in the expansion of a plus b raised to the negative 2 power. So that's pretty cool, huh? And again, leave a comment down below and let us know what's the condition to make this legitimate. And again, this is not technically a polynomial, but this right here, it was technically like a polynomial, infinite polynomial. Then the reason because is, right here we have a 1. Right here, we have a plus b. So that's also a hint to let you guys know how to determine that condition. But anyway, this right here is it. Hopefully you guys all like this video, and I personally think that this is really, really cool. And I first learned this back in discrete math, and I thought it was just mind-blowing that you can actually put some negative numbers right here and then work this out. Still a gentleman. And maybe you guys can do one half, choose five. Yeah, just like that. Very cool. Hopefully you guys all like this video. Coming up next, I will do a... Well, we did A plus B to the nth power. Why don't we do A plus B plus C to the nth power, namely the trinomial theorem, right? A plus B plus C to the nth power. Let's see how we can do that. All right, so stay tuned for that video. And as always, that's it. If you are new to my channel, though, be sure to subscribe and give me a like. Thank you guys so much.